And with that, I wanna bring up Jim Hall. Thank you so much for being here, Jim. I'm gonna exit and allow you to have your TED Talk experience. Good luck, my friend. Thank you, and thanks for joining me today. So uh, I'm Jim Hall, and I am a big believer that stepping into a new leadership role means letting go of some of the things that you used to do. And this is gonna be a challenge for a lot, of, a lot of new leaders. They may not recognize that their focus has changed with their new role, but it's really all about finding your new focus and the realization that what got you here isn't what's gonna get you there. So let's go on to the next slide. So if you look at effective leadership, what does effective leadership really mean? It's really about creating these engaged teams. So research shows that engaged teams are gonna be 50% more likely to innovate, they're gonna be 70% more likely to retain their top talent a year from now versus not, and they're gonna be 50% more likely to exceed expectations. And you've looked really at, actually at that retaining top talent number, right? These days, certainly the concern is that if you lose your top talent and you need to backfill, you're probably not gonna get the same quality of top talent that you lost. So having these engaged leaders to drive effective teams is even more important because it is all driven by effective leadership. Because the effective leader means you're gonna be driving uh, department effectiveness. And in turn, that means you're gonna have higher enterprise effectiveness. And the reason this is all important to me is because 70% of the engagement is driven by leadership. So you really do need to invest, I think, in the organization uh, to be most effective. You need to invest in those, in those, uh, in those leaders in, across your organization. Let me show you why that's important. Let's go to the next slide. So I wanna show you, uh, I served as CIO for like eight or nine years. And so when I was the campus CIO in higher ed, um, I did research into leadership or these different qualities of leadership at different levels of an IT organization. So you can see here, we've got uh, these four qualities, the strategic, the interpersonal, financial, and technical. And so, we're not talking about a one, two, three, four ranking of which one's most important to least important. It really was about the relative importance of those uh, qualities relative to each other. And so let me break it down real quick. And so uh, strategic is about setting the, the vision for the organization. Where are we headed as an organization? Where do we need to go? And so sometimes, when I talk about that, people say, well, I can't really predict the future because the future is changing and technology changes so quickly. But I like to use this analogy. So my mom does quilting. And so when she starts a new quilt project, I can't tell you exactly what that quilt will look like when she's done. But I can tell you what patterns and what colors are gonna be in that quilt. And so sometimes that's what strategic planning is really about. What are the colors? What are the patterns that are going to be uh, shaping your organization? And what do you need to do as an organization? What position do you need to be in to best respond to those colors and those patterns that are coming out? And so that's what strategic is really representing here. Uh, interpersonal is about working with people, right? So it's about the give and take of relationships because relationships really are the currency of leadership. And interpersonal is about building those relationships and leveraging those relationships so you can get things done. Now, financial is about budgeting. So we're talking about how much do things cost. You're building a budget for things. You're building a, a, a spending plan, right? It's all about the numbers. That's what the that's what financials really are paying attention to. And technical is about the hands-on technology. So as I look at these different IT departments, I look at uh, the technical knowledge is really about knowing the technology. It's working with the technology. It's it's laying hands on keyboards. It's uh, breaking apart computers. It's everything. It's touching the wires. It's all about the pieces that they're doing that are directly affecting technology. And so, as I said, this isn't a a one, two, three, four about about ranking. This is really about what, how much energy, how much focus are you putting into each one of these qualities. Uh, versus each other. And so I talked with people from all over, by the way, I talked to people from higher ed. Uh, when I did this research, I talked with government, I talked with private sector, I talked uh, with nonprofits. And so we tried to focus though on people who were settled in a position. 
and were successful in their position. So I, you know, I try not to focus too much on the manager who just became a manager or the CIO who just became a CIO. I was looking for people who had been the manager for a while or had been the CIO for a while and had been successful because I wanted to learn from them what made them successful. What focus did they put on these four qualities? What was the relative importance of these four IT qualities uh, that made them successful in that role? And so I found there's really three things, really interesting things that you can learn from this. Let's go to the next slide. I'll show you one of them. So. You can see here we're focusing on just the, the technology line, right? So it's it's no surprise, or it shouldn't be a surprise, that technology, the relative importance of technology, is going to drop dramatically the higher you go in leadership. So you shouldn't be expecting, for example, the CIO to be doing desktop support for the organization, right? I hope you're not. So, and that should make sense. So if you look across your organization, right, the staff level, certainly the staff are very focused on technology. That's their job. That's what they do. At the supervisor level, they're they're trying to keep an eye on the ground level, right? Where are things going in the ground? Um, they need to understand what's happening in technology. So technology is still very important to them. At the manager level, it's it's really dropped off, right? The manager is delegating that direct responsibility for technology. So let the supervisors worry about the technology. Let the staff worry about technology. The manager's really about taking that first step in the leadership. And so they're trying to delegate uh, some of their responsibility directly for technology. Uh, and by the way, remember the, the key to effective management, right? The key to effective management, the phrase I like to use is that it's about having the right people doing the right things at the right time. That's effective management. And so that's what the managers here are focusing on. They're focusing on uh, less about the technology and more about what are the people doing. And of course, the, the director and the CIO, they don't need to get into the details of technology, right? So they've, it doesn't mean that they don't know anything about technology. I think it's an important thing to say. That doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't mean they don't know anything about technology, but the CIO is using their technology knowledge in a different way because they're thinking about how can we leverage technology to solve a business problem? And then we're going to leave the details to further down the org chart. We're going to leave that to the supervisors and the staff to actually implement that technology. The CIO is just looking at how can we leverage new technology or leverage technology in a new way to solve the business problems that are facing the organization. And so that's what you're seeing here is that technology drops uh, pretty quickly the higher up you go in an organization. Now, let's look at the next slide. I want to show you something else that's really interesting because this shows why it's so difficult for many supervisors to make that first step into leadership, their first step in leadership being the management, because what's happening at the supervisor level? Well, three of those qualities are equally balanced. So technical is equally balanced with strategic, is equally balanced with interpersonal. And they believe that in order to be successful as supervisors, those, they're, they're very consistent in saying they need to worry about those things and and spend the same amount of time uh, on all three of those things. They need to spend the uh, same, spend, same amount of time worrying about those uh, in equal measure. But making that change, that, that step from supervisor into manager winds up being a very big challenge. And why? Because they often have a hard time recognizing that what made me successful here, what got me here, isn't what's going to make me successful there at the manager seat. They need to let go of some of that technology. I need to step up on strategic and interpersonal. And so that's a big change for them. It's a, it's a really hard challenge for a lot of these supervisors to let go of that technology because for so long, it's been such an important part of what they do. It's been equally balanced with a strategic and interpersonal. And now they have to let that go. And so technology needs to become less important. Again, it's not that they need to know less about technology. It's just that how it's impacting their day-to-day -day changes. So the important thing there is that what got you here won't get you there. And staying on the same slide, there's one other thing I want to kind of point out about uh, the, this research, and that's that, that uh, on the end, there's a little dip in interpersonal at the CIO level. And... I just want to highlight that's not a, that that CIOs aren't worried about interpersonal. Certainly, CIOs do need to build and maintain and leverage relationships. But if you look at the really big organizations, right, the University of Minnesota or 
Honeywell or 3M, where I was CIO for uh, Ramsey County for a couple of years. And so, you know, the CIO can't be everywhere. Those are large organizations and the CIO can't be everywhere in those large organizations. And those large organizations, the CIO typically has created a role called uh, usually like an IT liaison. And that liaison is the one that sort of builds the relationships on behalf of the CIO. So they go and talk with departments to understand what are your needs today? What are your needs in the future? And they come back and they synthesize that for the CIO. So it's not that the CIO doesn't value relationships. It's just that they've kind of delegated a little bit about those relationships. So let's look at the next slide. I wanna talk about how do you then focus your time? So how do you take that step from what got you here won't get you there and turn it into something you can focus on so you can be successful. So I like to look at your time really as a pie chart. So that pie represents all of your time at work. If you spend more time at the office, your pie chart is going to be bigger. You can, you can spend more time at the office. It's just going to be a bigger pie. At the end of the day, at the end of the week, you're still dividing your time into doing the job of a leader or a manager or staff. And so that's the question I ask people. Are you supposed to be a leader, a manager, or staff? Think about how you're focusing your time. So I want you to take a look at that. So leadership is about the big vision. As I said before, it's about what are the colors and the shapes that are going to be challenging us uh, as an organization, not just next year, but the next five years, the next 10 years. And how can we uh, reorganize the department or refocus the department or how can we change the organization so we are ready to meet those challenges in five years time, 10 years time. That's what strategic thinking is all about. That's what leadership is all about. Management though is all about the day-to-day -day operations. It's about, uh, as I said before, it's about having the right people doing the right things at the right time. So that management piece is about managing people. Uh, and staff is about, as I said before, it's really about the, the hands-on piece. It's about the, the, the doing, the, the managing servers, or it could be responding to email. Uh, staff is going to be sort of that focused time that's, that's not uh, looking at leadership. It's not looking at management. It's about sort of doing a task. And by the way, I used to work for a guy who thought that all successful leaders needed to look just like the pie chart that we've got up on screen now, that they needed to be uh, equally balanced among uh, leader, manager, and staff. He was one of those who believed that as a CIO, he should also be managing databases. Uh, but what's happening when you do that is you are, you're, in order to grow that staff wedge, you have to take away time from the leadership wedge. And so at the end of the day, he wasn't as successful leader as he thought he was going to be because he was taking away time. He was taking away focus from leadership so that he could do staff. And so that's why you really need to think about what is your focus? What are you focusing on? How are you focusing your time? How are you dividing your time? And are you doing the, lead, the work of a leader, a manager, or staff? Now let's real quick take a look at... Uh, what, what it looks like at a different level in organizations. Let's look at the next slide and we can see what staff would look like. And so you can see that on this on the slide, you're seeing that uh, most of your staff are probably gonna be probably an entirely gold circle, right? They're doing the work of staff. That, that makes sense that they're doing the work of staff. So they should be doing the, you know, that's what their, their pie chart should look like. But your rising star is gonna look like what we've got on this slide here. They're gonna have a small wedge that's about leadership. And what does that mean? Well, a rising star is the one who's thinking ahead in the organization. They're the ones that are thinking about where is technology headed and what things do we need to be doing as an organization right now to meet those challenges? Not next year, but maybe five years from now, right? What's coming down the road that we need to be uh, getting ready for? And those are your rising stars. And those are the ones that I believe you need to find in your organization and you need to support them and invest them. And I would say also listen to them because they're the ones that are paying attention to where technology is headed. And if you remember that chart with the lines, their big focuses are on technology, but clearly from this wedge, they're also thinking ahead. How is technology changing and how do we need to get there? And those are your rising stars. But if you look at the other end of the organization, so you look at, let's go to the next slide. So you look at the leadership level and a lot of successful leaders 
will look like this. Most of their time is focused on leadership. So you got a big wedge for red. Most of their time is focused on leadership. So where is the organization? Where is my organization going? What do I need to do to get us there? It's all about the big picture stuff. And of course, there's got to be a slice in there too, right? So every CIO, for example, has a management staff. And so there's some managing of the managers going on. The managers have supervisors reporting to them, but the CIO has the managers reporting to that person. So there is some time that needs to be taken away so you can uh, make sure the managers are you know, moving forward and executing the vision of the CIO. Uh, they are, that's the management piece that needs to happen. But again, most of their time, most of their focus is sitting on leadership. And yeah, there's going to be a small slice for staff. Everyone I've talked to has some small slice for staff. What's going on there? Well, the CIO usually will have a, an assistant to, and the assistant is taking care of probably the meetings and maybe replying to some obvious emails. But at the end of the day, the CIO probably is going to be replying to some emails uh, on their own. Uh, maybe they're writing a report or recommendations for something and they need to do a little bit of data analysis on their own. Uh, it's always kind of tempting for the person writing the report to actually do the data analysis. So they might be doing some of that data analysis on their own. Well, that's staff time. So there's always going to be a little wedge there for staff. But the big takeaway here is that most of their pie chart is taken up with leadership because that's where their focus is. So the recognition isn't that focus means you're excluding all else, but most of your time is being focused on leadership. Now, I've done this exercise with other CIOs and other uh, IT leaders. And in fact, if you go to the, uh, the state of Minnesota, uh, CIO uh, Commissioner uh, Tarek Tomes, uh, his chart looks just like this. Uh, he's focusing most of his energy on where is the state? Where is the state headed? And what things does he need to do uh, at minute to uh, be able to support the state? Not again, not a year from now, but five years from now, right? How are we, where are we uh, going? And how can I use the organization, leverage organization to get us there? Uh, the CIO for the University of Minnesota, Bernie Galachek, his chart looks a lot the same way. He's yeah, focusing most of his time on the University of Minnesota, where is the organization headed? And how do we need to leverage the organization to help the university get to where it needs to go? And I was CIO for Ramsey County for about three years, and I had a pie chart that looked very much like this too. So most of my time, again, I'm looking ahead at where the county is going and how can I leverage the organization to support where the county needs to go so we can support our residents better. And yeah, there was some time where I was uh, managing people as everyone needs to do, and there was some a little bit wedge in there for doing some staff when I was uh, responding to email or uh and now analyzing some data so I can make a recommendation. But again, the focus was on leadership and that's where I spent most of my time. And that brings me to my last slide. So you have to find your own focus. What do you need to do to focus on? And that's my challenge for you today is to take some time to reflect. I believe in reflection. So take some time in reflection to figure out what you need to focus to be successful in your role. You are the only person who can be your own lens. So be your own lens to find your focus. So the questions you need to ask yourself are, what things do you need to do to be successful? Are you going to be doing the job of a manager or a leader or staff? And as you do that, are you going to be focusing on technology, strategic, interpersonal, or financial? What's the relative importance of those four qualities? And that is going to help you to find your focus. And that's how you're going to be a successful leader. And I'm going to wrap that up with the, uh, for, for today. So thank you very much. And I will uh, stop there for questions.